What's going on, a holes holes? My name is Eric Johnson with Kevin Raymond at RPM, and this is episode eight of Stampede Wrestling, and it is out for blood. Finally here. That's right. I said it. You got a problem? Yes. Fuck you. I don't give a shit about your problems. Well, that's very mean. Good. Eric Red <laughs> doing Eric Redbeard things. Now it's a 12. So, you know, it was a zero, a two, now it's a 12. Hey, you know, he's getting better. Yeah. You know? Kid Nichols dragging him to that 12. Yeah. I mean, hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? And because it's a dark match in front of uh, some more people. 151 people here tonight at Arkston High School. High school. <laughs> That's right. We're at a high school gym. And we build a special set and have a local band. <laughs> They're all thinking the same thing regarding Kid Nichols. I've never seen a man try so hard yet accomplish so little. That's right. All right, but that's how we open with a dark match. Gets people interested. Probably not. Probably not. I'm going to go take a piss. (laughs) 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 Fuck it, man. I spent $7 for this? Let's, uh, Let's open the show right. There we go. Look at that. An impressive opening to the show. It's a 42 match, and American Dragon defeats Petey Williams in 1606 by submission with a cattle mutilation. So he did it. He did it. He beat uh, Hunter and Canada. actually got the show off to a strong start. He defeated Captain Canada. Team Canada has been defeated. So there you go. I don't American think Dragon. Be the last of them, though. American Dragon keeps his heat. Uh, Proven he's better than Canada. Yep. And Shane McMahon. Before, before this match happened, yep. Shane goes, so I've been paying a lot of attention to this rivalry in our women's division in general, and I just feel like we're missing something. These women don't really have a lot to fight. Shut up. These women don't really have anything to fight for. I don't find that that fair. So tonight, in my hands right here. In this bag, I, I have the women cha- the newly introduced women champion, and the winner of this match will be crowned the first ever champion. <laughs> I'm introducing the women's champion. It sure hell isn't one of you two. Damn. That'd be something. It's Daddy Nightheart, right? It turned into like the you're fighting for your jobs. Loser lose. Loser loses their job. How about that? <laughs> Bull fucking shit. And if, and if that loser wants to keep their job, they're gonna have to do some under the table work. Oh wait, I'm not my dad. <laughs> oh wait, not my dad. Sorry. But a seventy so, that'll just definitely help out. our women. And none, and, and none of you guys are a blonde haired bimbo from Toronto. Can't do that. <laughs> All right, but a 77, that's a good angle for us. It is. And it gets these two over. Were they even talking? All right, who's going to be the first champ? Is it going to be Luke Fisto? Is it going to be Tracy Brooks? Take your picks in the comment section, because it is. And it looks like Tracy... No, a 31. Tracy Brooks defeated Luke Fisto in 742 with a handful of uh, tights to win the championship. Boom. And Tracy Brooks is the first ever Stampede Women's Champ. There you go. 31 match. Tracy Brooks keeps her heat. Second, and now we got the tag team title match between the Second City Saints and El Generico and Kevin Steen. And it's looking like CM pinned El Generico with a doomsday dropkick. Uh, Second City Saints make defense number one of their international tag team titles, and even though they only defend it here, yeah. what's that? Even though they only defend it here, <laughs> yeah, it's international, but it's only defended in Canada. That's <laughs> pretty interesting. <laughs> so hold on, the tag team titles is the international title. <laughs> the uh, the heavyweight title is the North American heavyweight title. And the mid-quarter title is just only the British Commonwealth. 
Here, let me let me explain something to you though. With our world title, it makes sense because last time I checked, Canada is definitely part of the North American continent. Yes. But you would think, you know, you're only representing North America with the tag team titles. You're international with the okay. I don't know. Oh, so you're working dates in Japan too? Yep, everywhere. Really? International. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? Look, we don't make the rules. This that's already been a title, all right? We're keeping it. <laughs> I'm just saying. We don't make the rules, RBM. British Sorry, TJ, you don't look British to me. You teeth look actually decent. Your teeth look decent, all right? It looks like you actually go... It looks like you actually go to a dentist. If anyone actually watches in the British Isles, RBM's not sorry. <laughs> you're, you're goddamn right. All right, next segment. There you go. And then... Oh, Bill Alfonso. Yep, yeah, Bill Alfonso hyping up his client, Kazushika Okada, for his next match. And Okada actually defeats Steve Carino in 1435 by pinfall with a Rainmaker. A 41 match is definitely going to help him. I love uh, that. Does it say that the crowd was turned off or something? By no, it just says Raymond Rougeau could have done better as a road agent. That's about it. Yeah. It's still a good match, though. I'd take still... him off road agent and just let him be the color commentator. Yep, yeah, but, uh, yeah, it looks like he did a, um, they, they, they did a draw about there. 41, so that just helps the show in general. This next thing's going to be terrible. 17. Yes, that is in danger. Yeah, yeah, Nanny Nightheart and Sarah Stock. Sarah Stock's actually pretty good. She's a heel. Nice. Yeah, she's one of the masked ladies we have right there. But this is, but this is the eight women match to determine the future number one contender, which is going to be Alice in Danger. Then what you get? Allison Danger got a 24, so not a bad pick. Oh, thank God. Not a bad pick. Yep. It's not the best pick, but it was... Actually, um... Karen Jones, what did she get? Karen That's Jones got a 10. A 10, so yeah, she got a good gimmick, but terrible in ring. We'll just put her out there some more and let her work on it. Yep. Uh, Vanessa Craven actually didn't do that bad either. She has potential. Yeah. Um, Sweet Perry did better than she usually does. So let's see. Not suitable to be used by a heel. That's because we protected Sweet Cherry in this match. So she's a legitimate gimmick, so she can't lose to comedy. Gimmicky cartoonish. Cannot take part in comedy bouts. Okay, cool. But it wasn't a comedy bout, so... Oh, no. Oh, fuck. Alice in Danger. Okay, Sweet Cherry got heat. Almost fucking broke Alice in Danger's neck. Sweet Cherry. Yeah, I think it's... I, 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 th I think it's yeah. time to let her go, guys. She hasn't performed and... I don't even think she's that good at refing either. I was like, okay, you want to be a ref? Uh, that's no, about what I was about to do. But she wasn't... A, if she's a manager, if the last thing we're putting her on, if she can't do that, she's out. I'm done. And this was pretty bad. That was horrible. Yeah, he wasn't even talking, so the crowd just didn't like him sitting there. He was having a somber moment, you know, thinking about what's about to happen. Flash, like, hey, up next, we're going to have TJ. Maybe Wilson. it was a bad rating because everyone did not like being sad. Yeah, probably. Anyway, let's see. Uh, there you go. 31. About that, a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. TJ Wilson defeated the Disciple in 12 minutes by submission with a sharpshooter. So, wow, he tapped his brother out. Yeah. No, no, no remorse. I imagine, like, for a solid two thirds of this match, TJ just wasn't fighting back at all. And then. He finally just got pissed off and just beat their shit out of him and then just Put tapped him out hard Yeah. All right. And then the angle. So, after the match, you know, <coughs> he's, uh, he's not, like, crippled, but, you know, he's he's pretty much done after that sharpshooter. He was, he's physically spent. He can't even, he can't even, like, turn over. He's just on his, he's just on his stomach, eyes, eyes shut. And TJ, he's just laying there by his brother. 
almost emotionless. But you can see he's just, he's just heartbroken. Just he just keep on seeing him mouth the words. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's just 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 barely audible. He he's just yeah. He's just saying I'm. So, he's just turning. He just turns to his brother. He's like he says I'm sorry. He he sits up kind of by him. He you know maybe kind of a maybe like a he loves his head or something like that. When CM Punk and Goldberg <clears throat> comes out, he says T.J. Wilson. It is without a doubt you are the biggest piece of shit in wrestling. Look what you have just done to your brother. Your addiction for this crowd, your addiction for gold, the addiction for that belt has cost you everything. You say you're you say you do this for the fans, you say you, you're a performer, but you do but you do it for the for the short high you get when you get to hold that title above your head. You're not a it's like a you're not you're not a wrestler, you're a fraud. You hurt your brother. You don't des- you don't deserve success in life. Pete should be the one holding that belt. You know, I would say I I feel bad for you after your dad walked out, but I'm glad he did so he wouldn't see you so he wouldn't have seen what you just did to your brother. Your father may have hurt you in many ways, but he never physically beat you like you beat your brother. It's like, this is all on you. You have nothing to blame but yourself. And TJ Wilson, he doesn't he doesn't even look at Punk. His eyes are just glued to his lifeless brother's basically corpse. He's he's just just taking this verbal assault that CM Punk is laying on him. And then he just rolls out the ring and then Punk and Colt Vanna grab the disciple Pete and carry him out. And then, uh, so AJ Styles... Oh, uh, hold on, yeah. So AJ Styles, hold on. So AJ Styles, you know, he comes out and, uh, you know, he goes, you know, like I said last day, I'm ready for a fight. Uh, anybody from around the world that wants to come and challenge me, AJ Styles. This is the house that AJ Styles built here at Stampede. Uh, uh, come and face right now, tonight. And then uh, you know, he's waiting for about maybe a minute. And then that's right. The big surprise is Abaddon. He has to survive. And he beats up AJ Styles before the match. That's right. It was always going to be Abaddon. It was never going to be anyone but Abaddon. We fooled you all to watch the next episode. You got fooled, sucker. Is Abaddon going to be the next champion? Yes, definitely not because... Uh, Whoa. I got sent out a contract four days before the show. Hey, it turned out pretty good, though. So AJ Styles defeated Abaddon in 1248. Fight back from the, oh, the spiral tap. AJ Styles makes defense number two of the North American Heavyweight Championship. Number two. Seven yeah. match. Nice. Not bad. And now it's time for the main event of the evening. A cage match. That got a 53. Shane McMahon defeats Harry Smith in the cage match with a flying elbow drop. We're going to say from the top of the cage. With a drop, a drop to the heart of Harry Smith to beat him. And AJ gets his revenge. Yeah, AJ. Shane McMahon gets his revenge on Harry Smith after running him over with his own car. His Mercedes. His Mercedes. His Mercedes my God. You know what I really feel bad for after this whole thing? The Mercedes. I do. Now they're even at one and one. What's going to happen now? I don't know. End of series. Go to 52. Yeah. There you go. We can make a speech now. All right. I would compliment, uh, who, who do we think really performed well tonight? I think American Dragon definitely did. Uh, Shane. He just passed himself on the back. He passed myself on the back. Uh, can you? That'd be funny. Let me just no. suck my own dick for a sec. Let's give Okada some nice, like, hey, wait, that was a better match than we thought you were going to do. Give him some encouragement? No, I just say, you know. 
verbally eviscerate. Praise no, but that's what we heard the last show. We were, we were in a verbal evisceration. Just yes, we did. Not on a wrestler, but on the security. I'd say confident on a good performance. So when someone punches you in the fucking face, you don't say you're okay. <laughs> yeah, I'd say confident on a good performance. I mean, I think that match turned out better than we thought it was going to. And I think, uh, I'd say Punk, honestly, or AJ. Which one do you want to say? AJ. AJ, yeah. Point out as a great example or a praise for, yeah, great performance. You did pretty good. Seemed please. Seemed please. Seemed please. Oh, what was the first ever event? Of course you're just gonna seem please. I'll you can only make, make uh, speeches at events. Right. Fuck, I, I guess every show we do is an event, Kevin. I mean, technically. We, we always get a pre-show speech. We get a pre-show speech on a post-show. Yeah. So, actually, what, what we, we, get, we get what's yeah, called a... Surprise sign. Look, let's see if the surprise sign. He did. He did. That's him. I know. Unless it's a pay rise request. Tiger Raj Singh's back. What's the viewership? Forty five hundred. So typical. Fuck. <laughs> that is bigger than the last rating, I think. Let's it was. <laughs> I don't know if I want to show them who the surprise was. I mean, Not I yet. Know, didn't we? Surprise no? finally said, Hey guys, I'll come. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Dickhead. <laughs> Times was got all fucked up. Sorry, I just I, uh, take Raymond Rajon <laughs> work. He can be in an, yeah, he's both in the, uh, no, no more red agent for you. And now you've, you've screwed up a good bit, man. He's not a 55 a, to a hundred. You think he'd be better? Yeah, but apparently not. He must be at the 55. Even fifties is pretty good. So I'm confused. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's see how Tuesday. Uh, it's right. It's on Tuesdays with Hunter. Was, no, it's Monday, so it's was there a pay-per-view? No. Uh, now, let's see if there's any interesting news. Well, a lot of low society. Oh, God, the low society is Shawn Michaels, John Cena, Eugene. You see the way regal. What the heck is this? The low society. Now, what do they mean by low? It's a pretty low know. society if you got Shawn Michaels and uh, John Cena. Is this I don't the know. With Eugene, I don't know. So it's like a new Eugene there. Wait, why don't we just edit that still called Slow Society? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Sean's got a lazy eye. Hey, that's fucked up that you would call it Slow Society. Slow Society. Just because he, work- just cause he doesn't know how to work a computer, how dare you call Shawn Michaels slow? Oh god, <laughs> slow society. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> Look, just because John Cena has a made up degree doesn't mean he's slow. <laughs> he's so slow he had to make up a degree. So. <laughs> Smart. Oh god. We haven't checked anything interesting. Let's, uh. Let's uh no, that's interesting. Look, just because we're in the drink piss doesn't mean he's slow. Look, this, now the side tabs. You know, the stuff for, like, uh, news, all that stuff. Not company wars, but, like, see what's going on. Anything interesting in the news? Fucking The Rock died. Oh, <sighs> uh, yeah, we don't have enough people. We don't have enough companies in Alberta, so we're actually good. Thank God. <clears throat> um, Thank God. And we got Kanto. Holy shit. We're playing Pokemon there. How are we doing in India? How are we doing in India? The only company... Nope, there's only two regions that battle. Are we going actually. up in India at all? Like, I actually, can imagine, like, the gas station, and they're like, Oh my god, he just jumped into the big cage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> cancelled again. God damn it. <laughs> Oh, 
I want to see a Punjabi prison match. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> Maybe in 2007 on a big stage. Let's, uh, like I said, let's see, uh, what our reminiscence in India have we gone up at all. Oh, yeah, then, then we know for sure. It is. We're at one now. Hey! We're moving up. Slowly but surely. Officially, 1% of the population knows about us in India. Yep. Who knows, if we ever actually make money, we might increase our coverage, but... So Alberta spells in the Saskatchewan, British Columbia, and Northwest, wherever the f fuck Northwest is. Oh, it's Northwest United States. Yeah. Uh, see, we have a five Northwest. There you go. It hasn't moved that I'm aware of, has it? No. I mean, yet? Wait, what did it say? Look it's at five it. the whole time. Okay. Well, we've only just started moving, so. Yeah. How do we how do we get Mexico? Uh. We we don't. They just they've heard because uh, God has told them about it. <laughs> you pieces of shit! I always lose. They'll tell you what the motherfuckers up in Stampede let me win. Yeah, you pieces. Yeah, you pieces of shit. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I just beat Steve Carino up there. Yo, we've really dropped in price. Look at our total money now. We're out of the 200 tells. I mean, we're going to be losing money for a while, but I have a feeling eventually we'll, we will start making money. Ticket sales went up. Our broadcast revenue went up. Go back to that. I would like to see it. Broadcast re revenue went up. Sponsorship went up. Merch see, that's what I'm saying. Up. We well, just gotta believe, you know. We have to keep on booking good shows, and eventually, we'll, we will make it right. What's our merchandise looking like, though? I mean, we're selling it, but I mean, I mean, like the quality and stuff. Uh, you wanna, you wanna level this up? I don't know. I mean, we could do rapid. Two hundred fifty dollars per month, per week. Two hundred fifty. But would that help us with our merchandise sales? Yes, it would. Which is extra money, but we're also spending more. I mean... You think it's worth it, RBM? Sure, yeah. Yeah, sure, let's do it. Let's take the gamble on merchandise. Oh, uh, we will progress once a week. Okay. Right. It'll take us about two months to go up to level four. Awesome. All right. All right. I don't know what else to put in this episode. Oh, so workers still bring their own merchandise and sell it during intermission. I, know. I figured that. Back to make an average. We have stampede. Uh, Basically, an average of the dollar per fan in attendance. So if we have a hundred, that's a hundred dollars. So the three bucks per popularity point per region each month. For the mail order side of the business. So that's why. Let's see what it is for mail order. 480. So we're going. We went up a little bit because of that 19 now. So that's good. I have event. We we did a hell of a good job. Exactly. So we're that's doing fun. good. I'd say eventually we will even out and make money again. It's just the India TV. I can't wait to start now. selling individual fucking guys fucking shirts and shit. Uh, we still got time, but I think that's it for this episode. I don't know what else to put, guys. What about you? I don't know either. See you next time. See ya. RBM, anything nice you want to tell these people? No, they can all go to hell. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>